Wrestling fans, welcome to the February edition of the MWF Superstar Zone. I'm Dan Moratti, joined by the one and only Mr. Money in the Bank himself, Shelton Benjamin. Shelton, here we are, the historic TD Boston Garden prior to the Boston Blazers Colorado Mammoth lacrosse game. It's going to be a huge night momentarily. It's going to be a really huge night. And uh, this is actually my first time that I actually see a lacrosse game. So a lot of firsts for me tonight. A lot of firsts for you. Well, I was going to bring up your first, your first pay-per-view appearance. Let's talk a little bit about that. Royal Rumble 2003, you were one of the 30 men that competed in a match that was eventually won by Brock Lesnar. Your memories on a first pay-per-view in World Wrestling Entertainment. Uh, well, my first memory of that match was actually uh, one of my favorite matches of, of all time was that night when uh, Kurt Angle faced Chris Benoit. Tremendous match. Of course, I, I was a member of Team Angle at that time, and we actually got ejected out of the match before the match started. Before that, myself and my partner, uh, Charlie Haas, but, uh, I mean, that, that's the first memory that comes to my mind. But uh, to actually come out my very first pay-per-view, being the, being the Royal Rumble with all the WWE superstars, I mean, for, for a kid like me, it was a dream come true. Would you say that the Benoit Angle match was better than the Triple H Scott Steiner championship match on that event? I, I would say that would be one of the most easy assumptions ever. Very honest answer from one of the true superstars here in the Money Wrestling Federation. You want to talk about history in Boston. Let's go back to May of 2005. When I will say, until the end of time, unless things really change in the professional wrestling industry, one of the greatest matches in the history of WWE Monday Night Raw, HBK Shawn Michaels, Mr. Money in the Bank, Shelton Benjamins. Your memories of what will go down is one of the all-time greats in WWE history. Uh, wow. Uh, I remember... Uh, come, I remember the crowd. I remember everything about that night. It was, it was one of the biggest moments of my career, I guess. Uh, to be in the ring with, you know, one of the greatest of all time, arguably the greatest of all time. I would argue Ric Flair the greatest of all time, but, you know. You disagreed with the DVD. Uh, you know what? It's one of those things you, you flip a coin. But, uh, you know, I've always been a Flair fan. I grew up watching Ric Flair. Shawn Michaels is definitely... You know, very close, uh, too close, almost too close to call. But I, you know, I'm a Ric Flair fan. Uh, I got to go with Rick on that one. But to be in the ring with Shawn Michaels uh, is still for for me at that time a dream come true. I know I've been a wrestling fan my entire life. I've been a Shawn Michaels fan, so for me to actually be in a match with Shawn Michaels one on one. It just doesn't get any better than that. And uh, Gold Rush Tournament, uh, first round, and I just remember coming out and and like it was like a magic thing. Everything was just coming together. And uh, obviously, everyone knows that I came up short in that match in spectacular fashion. That's been uh, attempted that duplicated a few times. I, I don't think it was quite you know, came close to what me and Sean did. But that was one of the like, one of the best nights of my career. You know the match is coming up, Shawn Michael, Shelton Benjamin. You know it's going to be a tremendous match. But did you have any inkling before you walked through the curtain to come out into the garden itself when it was the Fleet Center that it was going to be a spectacular, historic match the way it's remembered with such reverence today? Uh, I always knew if I ever got a chance to work Shawn Michaels that me and him could make magic. Uh, I, I'm, I'm very confident in my abilities. And obviously Shawn is, you know, the showstopper. You know the main event and all these other adjectives. So I knew, given a chance to work with Shawn Michaels, there, there is no way that, with my abilities, that we couldn't do something great. Did I expect it to be what it was? Honestly, no. Uh, I, I I knew it was going to be a great match, a great competition. Uh, but it's one of those things when when it just starts happening and you feel it and you know it's going well. But it's almost one of those things where you have to actually go through the match and then it's, it's only until you look back that you realize what just happened. You know, so I, I had no 
idea that it would get the reviews it got, the praise it got, and you know, uh, to this day, it's still one of the matches that people always. It's, it's actually the first match people always uh, bring up and speak to me. Even more than the Money in the Bank. Even more so than the Money in the really? Bank. Really? Uh, definitely. Uh, mind you, the Money in the Bank is you know considered my match, but I think. Uh, that particular match just showed that I could compete with the big boys and that while I could do a lot of crazy things and stunts, when it comes to straight wrestling, I can go with the best of them. And I, I think I showed that that night. Your final pay-per-view appearance to this date with WWE was Survivor Series 2008. You were the final man eliminated from Team Orton. Also, your good friend Cody Rhodes was on that team. Your memories from that Thanksgiving tradition here in Boston? Uh, you know, I, I, I don't have a whole lot of fond memories from that night, to be honest. Um, I was happy to be in the, in the match. Um, there was things going on within the match that was completely unexpected. I did a lot more fighting than I expected to. Um, while, it was a good, while it was a good time, it was more of a... I, 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 my biggest mistake about that match was actually when I was just working with Dave. Batiste, Batiste. Uh, j just because, you know, it, I really, I felt like I was taking it to him, and uh, obviously, once again, I came up short, so uh, not, not too many great memories about that match, but, you know, it was a chance to be on pay-per-view, it was a chance to work in front of an awesome crowd, because the Boston crowd is, is always, fun. they're always, always, fun. Fun. There, there's only a few places that when we come, we know, you see, the angels are singing. They're singing they sing right now. That's so, right. so, there's only a few places you can go and you know you're going to get that kind of crowd reaction. And Boston is definitely one of those places. I think we're going to get one right now. Unbelievable, ladies and gentlemen. Let's talk about really getting into the thick of things. SummerSlam 2010, you weren't even with WWE at that point. The big scandal in the Money Wrestling Federation. Why was President Cena bringing Daniel Bryan into WWE? And shockingly, Daniel Bryan returned to John Cena's team at SummerSlam. Thanks to our good friend Jim Ross, whose great sauces you can check out at jisbarbecue.com. He helped bring you to the Money Wrestling Federation with President Cena. Your initial thoughts in that tremendous five-way match up that took place at our anniversary event that some call the greatest match in the history of the MWF. You stole Raw history, you made MWF history on Ultra, even though in the end, Slick Wagner Brown got involved. Yeah, uh, we'll get to Slick Wagner Brown in a second. Um, you know, my first time, uh, that was actually one of my first matches away from WWE. I, I still, at the time, had only performed maybe three times before, you know, doing that show. And it was a chance for me to work with a lot of guys who I'd never worked with before, meet people I'd never met before, you know, hang out with the sheep. Wow, you know, uh, there's uh, lots of sheep oh, stories. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You had one earlier. You haven't lived until you hung out with the sheep. No. So, but, uh, uh, to come in and, you know, and like I said, I, when I left WWE, my, my main concern was having fun because I had, I, I felt like I, I, I've been losing my passion, I've been losing my drive, and, uh, you know, it was, a, it was a great opportunity for me to come and have fun and work with those guys. Like I said, the angels are singing for us again. God bless them. God bless them, because it, it was such a good time for me. So, uh, I, I really enjoyed that. Um, Did an appearing and competing in a regional wrestling event such as that reignite that passion that you may have lost in recent years? Oh, without a doubt. Uh, I've been... I've been, uh, you know, doing the indie scene for for a while now, and I tell you what, I, it's it's a different feeling when you come into a place and you you can feel completely appreciated, both by the fans and by the organization. And uh, you know, say what you want about WWE, you know, there there are times when I just didn't feel appreciated, uh, you know. But at the same time, it's a business. I understand a business, and, and when it comes to business, you gotta take your feelings and, and get rid of them. Uh, what? Oh, go ahead. No, I was, gonna, I, you know, I was just gonna say, but to come, but to be on regional shows, like I, I'm enjoying myself, I'm having the time of my life, and, and I hope to do a lot more. Well, we'd love to see you here in the Millennium Wrestling Federation, and I think President Cena is thinking along the same lines as he is signed in the main event of Soul Survivor Seven, our biggest live event. Fan Fest, auction raffles, and so much more to keep the kids off the street in 2011. 
It will be you against the MWF heavyweight champion Slick Wagner Brown of John Bradshaw Layfield's Uprising for 15 pounds of gold for the gold standard to perhaps walk away with. Uh, well, now, we, now we're talking about a party. You see, when I came to the MWF, at first, I came for fun. I came to just have a good time, work with some new guys, and you know, hopefully pull out a victory. Uh, Slick Ragnar Brown took it upon himself to uh, make a statement. When the statement was heard loud and clear, now you've got the full undivided attention of the gold standard. And the last thing you want is to be in my crosshairs. So uh, now we're talking about championships. When it comes to the wrestling business, I enjoy two things. I enjoy the fans, and I enjoy championships. Slick Ragnar Brown has 15 pounds of gold around his waist that is officially mine. He's just carrying it for me. And as sole survivor, Slick Ragnar Brown will relieve himself of my property because he took it upon himself to stick his nose in my match. Could be the MWF TV champion right now. If it I, exactly, and you know, I probably would not have been so focused on Slick Murphy Brown. I would have just enjoyed my time as a TV champion. But since he's taken it upon himself to interfere in my match, cost me a win, cost me a championship, well now Slick Murphy Brown has time to finish. Unbelievable, it was August of 2003 in this very building. You and Kelly Haas defeated John Layfield and Farouk, the APA. What are your thoughts about John Layfield's involvement in this matchup? You know he's not going to send a man. He's invested an unknown amount of money in into Memorial Hall in Melrose, unprepared to face him. Well, John Layfield is a man who will waste. He, he will spend no expense. No expense. Obviously, Slick Wagner Brown retaining the uh, MWF Heavyweight Championship for his stable. So I have no doubt that he probably has some of his space. And uh, I work with Layfield on many occasions. Uh, as a member of the APA and as JBL, uh, I've had plenty of run ins with uh, Layfield. And if history serves, the last time John Brashaw Layfield faced a Shelton Benjamin. He came up on the short end of the stick. If that's something he may be coming at with even a little bit more ferocity than he may otherwise. But fans, we had just, we're talking, gone from months to weeks. We're coming upon days to Soul Survivor 7. Mr. Money in the Bank, Shelton Benjamin will be there. Carlito, Caval makes his MWF debut. X-Pac, a DX and an NWO original. Paul Bearer. Robbie E. from TNA, the original Doink the Clown, Matt Bourne, President John Cena Sr., and some of the hungriest young athletes you will see anywhere in the United States. Money Wrestling Federation, it's where the superstars and legends of yesterday, today, and tomorrow come together. Saturday, March the 19th at Memorial Hall, we will do that. Shelton, we look forward to the press conference taking place in just a bit. We'll be back after this brief timeout. champion Die Hard Eddie Edwards against Hurricane John Walters against an Irishman named Fergal Devon. Well, right now, Eddie Edwards, if you have HD net, he's one of the top superstars in Ring of Honor. Hurricane John Walters, standout in Ring of Honor, uh, is also on MTV2's Leisha Libre program. Fergal Devon is one of the finest professional wrestlers in the world, competing in New Japan. All of those folks were not the marquee attraction at Soul Survivor 3, so to speak. But again, it's the superstars and legends of yesterday, today, and tomorrow competing under one roof. And that is what you are going to see on March the 19th in our hometown of Melrose, Massachusetts at Memorial Hall. 
only to be outdone by President Cena the following day, Sunday, March the 20th. We're going to have our Paul Bearer Studio shoot interview where the manager from the dark side is going to be joining us for a documentary-style DVD taping. It is certainly going to be worth every penny if you choose to attend autographs, photos, and admission to the DVD taping. And with that, I introduce to you the illustrious, the innovative, the creative, the crafty, a man I disagree with 95% of the time with, but a man who I respect for his charitable endeavors, a lot of the things that the MWF has done over the year with the Make-A-Wish Foundation, um, the Big Brothers, Special Olympics, uh, the money we raised with the Lynn Armory for the troops and the families in Iraq, uh, fire departments, police departments, so much charity work has been done. It's been talked about online and it has gone under the table a lot of the times because most of it is done not to try and look for a pat on the back, but all under the auspices of our main focus, which is keeping the kids off the street with action-packed movies come to life, I guess is the best way to present it, which was uh, in honor of the two little people in my life, the MWF Junior Ambassadors, Brandon J. and Devon Brent, who I wish were here tonight. But nonetheless, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. President John Cena Sr. What can I say? All I can say is that it's certainly an honor to be in your presence. It's certainly an honor to be in the presence of Shelton Benjamin. And I have to give the devil his due, Slick Wagner Brown, two outstanding athletes. But these are not the only two athletes that I've got signed for the March 19th event in Melrose, Massachusetts. In Melrose, Massachusetts, I wanted this to be an event that you would remember. I wanted to bring in some stars that you would remember. Some stars from the past, some stars from the present, and I think stars of the future. So March 19th, MWF, Melrose, Massachusetts, I'll give you a few names of individuals who are going to be on that show. I call them the one, two, three kid. That's how I remember him, but he'll be there. Mr. Sean X. Park Waltman will be there. The man who always says, I speak in the face. Carlito, a man that I have issues with, will be at the MWF show. The one and only Paul Barron. He's there with the deranged, the demented, I don't know what else to call this idiot, Dylan Cage. He's crazy. And Barra is even crazier. These two together, I tell you, will create nothing but havoc when Dylan Cage and Percy Pringle, Paul Barra, meet up with the demon, Louis Ortiz. Handsome Johnny is going to be there. Todd Hanson. We have, the list goes on and on and on. The original Doink the Clown, Matt Bourne. I think Matt is kind of teetering on the edge. You know, sometimes I, I see him wrestle when he's in the back, and I wonder just what kind of a world Matt Bourne is really in. <laughs> I don't think that face, you know, he kind of reminds me of the Joker in Batman. Uh, what do you think, Batman? What do you think? of Doink the Clown. A, an event to be remembered, an event that you want to be part of. Trust me on this one. The lineup is fantastic. The matches I put together will not disappoint. But we're here for one reason tonight. Like him or hate him, you have to respect him because he is your, our MWF champion Slick Wagner Brown, and his opponent, Shelton Benjamin, Mr. Money in the Bank. So it's customary when we do these types of signings that each individual has the opportunity to come to the podium and address you, the fans, and if he so desires, or she so desires, to address their 
opponents. So without further ado, let me bring to the podium right now none other than the champion, Mr. Slick Wagner Brown. Mr. President, I am the champion. So Mr. Benjamin, you can go first. Okay, let's do it, let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, it is with great pleasure and a great honor, and I mean that, that I bring to the podium the challenger in the MWF championship match. He is Mr. Money in the Bank, Sheldon Benjamin! First of all, uh, let me uh, thank everyone who's in, in attendance. Um, this is actually, this will actually be my second uh, match ever for the NWF. And it's an uh, honor and a privilege to be able to face their champion, Slick Wagner Brown, who I'll address further later. Um, as a lot of you know, I'm a w, former WWE uh, superstar. You might not recognize me, me without the blonde hair, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, those, those days are, are behind me eh, for, the, for the foreseeing future. Uh, but I have a lot of uh, history wrestling in Boston. Uh, it was in Boston that I was in my very first WWE pay-per-view, which was a Royal Rumble. And uh, I, I think I was in Team Angle at the time, and uh, I want to say Brock Lesnar ended up eliminating me and my opponent, but uh, you know, better luck next time. Uh, I actually, it was also the site of my last pay-per-view, which was a Survivor Series match, which we won't go too much into that because things didn't quite pan out the way. My team won, that's the important part. Uh, but the biggest event I had here was this is where I had my historic match with some people have, and I'm, I'm quoting, I'm not tooting my own horn, but some people say one of the best matches on Raw ever was when I faced Shawn Michaels in the Gold Rush tournament. And uh, that was, uh, to this day, still one of the biggest uh, opportunities of my career. Uh, while that was the end, while those, that pretty much were the highlights of my history wrestling in Boston for the WWE, uh, my history with the NWF only started this last fall, where uh, I came in uh, and I was involved in a five-man, uh, I guess you could call it a Royal Rumble type match for the uh, television title. And honestly, that, I was having a lot of fun in that match and uh, things were really starting to go my way uh, until uh, someone, uh, someone being uh, Slick Wagner Brown decided to interject himself. So, with that in mind, Slick Wagner Brown has taken it upon himself to get the attention of the gold standard. Slick Wagner Brown has taken upon himself to get the attention of one of the greatest athletes to ever step foot in the wrestling ring. And I am toot my horn that because I know I am that bad. Yeah. So, so this brings us to Soul Survivor with Slick Wagner Brown and his... Uh, I guess his cohorts in the uh, John Bradshaw late field. I call him Brad John Bradshaw Whitney because that's his wife's name, and she's really the one with all the money. <laughs> so, if uh, JBL's uh, henchmen, his top henchmen, want to uh, interject, I may have a few surprises of my own. But as Soul Survivor, not only will you see a new MWF champion, you will see a better MWF yeah. champion. So, yeah, we'll see about that. Not only, I mean, history has been proven. I already took blonde hair and made it look better than you did. So I'm going to take that championship and make it look better than you did. So, in closing, I would like to say, at, at my first appearance with MWF, you came and got just a little taste of honey. But at Soul Survivor, you're going to get the whole beehive.
Where's the money in the bank, huh? I had no idea you're such a comedian. Right here. This is why we're here. This is why you're here. This is what you want. But this belongs to me. Benjamin, there's no question you're a great athlete. I know that, and clearly he knows that. And you know that. I've seen a lot of the things that you've done, and I give you a round of applause. But standing across from you in that ring on March 19th at Melrose is another great athlete. And we're going to put that to the test. Benjamin, I saw your match with Shawn Michaels. I've seen your matches with Money in the Bank. And my friend, and I say that in quotes, you stole the show. Congratulations. You moved on from that, and you further impressed not only me, but you impressed them by stepping in the ring with Shawn Michaels and having, yes, one of the greatest moments in Raw history. I'll give you a round of applause for that, no question. <clears throat> but, Shelton, all those moments, all those moments, we'll get back to that. Let's talk about something more important. Let's talk about me, the champion. I got one man in the corner over there that has an ounce of brain. You people might want to sit with him after the show. Benjamin, I was trained by one of the legends in this business. I was trained by Killer Kowalski. <laughs> you people come from Boston, you better give it up more for a legend like Kowalski. That man, he went in the ring, there was no nights off. And that's going to be me on March 19th. It ain't going to be no fun time. It ain't going to be no vacation. You come for my title, I'm coming for you 100%. Benjamin, on March 19th, you're stepping in the ring with a man that has not only competed all over the United States, you're stepping in the ring with a man that has competed all over this world. I have competed for IWA Puerto Rico. I have competed in, in England with all-star professional wrestling. I have competed in Japan for New Japan Pro Wrestling. I have competed in Japan for other companies as well. And you know what? All those experiences is the reason why I'm standing here with you tonight as the MWF Heavyweight Champion. Benjamin, I talked about all your accomplishments. I further educated you and all these morons about my accomplishments. And on March 19th, in Melrose, Massachusetts, when you step in the ring with me, SWB, the Underground King, your MWF Heavyweight Champion, all those moments I mentioned before are gonna have one thing in common, and that's you losing. Because despite the fact that you are a great athlete, you are also a loser. And on March 19th, I'm going to prove that to every single one of you, especially you, Mr. Benjamin. Yeah, that's it. 
All right. Just because you're going to have to be physical. Yeah. 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 We don't want any physicality here. Let's see. Well, you know, the fans might get a little more than they want. Well, who's got the contract? Let's go. Yeah. Sit down. If you want to sign this contract, then there'll be no match. Yeah. I think you don't want to get physical. Sit down. Yeah. 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 Ye